Okay, um, in this video I'm gonna go over how to colorize realistically black and white photos, especially old black and white photos. Um, but I think the first thing that we have to understand or to go over is uh, understand how light works and how light interacts with colors and, and the environment. So, for example, the reason why you see those, you know, old colorizations and why they look super fake is because they apply the same uh, tone and hue and saturation to the entire you know area that they are painting in and that's not how light works uh, light will be or color will be more saturated when it's on high, uh, will be a little bit less saturated when it's on a highlight even less saturated when it's on a shadow and it's going to be about the right saturation when it's on a mid-tone. Uh, highlights and shadows are also going to have a different hue. Sometimes I make the highlights a little bit more on the yellows, reds, and the shadows a little bit more on the green or, or blues, but sometimes the shadows I also make them on the magenta. I, I, I don't know if there's a scientific explanation for it, if it depends on anything else. But anyways, the, the point is that those things change. change. Uh, the hue changes, the saturation changes as it becomes less saturated or, or as it becomes darker or lighter than what you would say a normal mid-tone would be. And also light and color bounce off of surfaces into other surfaces. And this uh, might be more or less relevant in different photographs. It's not going to be so much relevant in this photograph because of the nature that everything around her is far away so you have to take that into account and if everything is almost you know pretty much on the same um color scheme if everything is warm then it won't be that much of an issue but it will be in other cases and i can give you examples uh, so for example in here um her arm will bounce light will bounce some of her skin tone into her pants that she's wearing and the color of her pants is going to bounce back into her arm, especially in this area right here. And those are small little details that we have to take into account when we're colorizing the images. The actual technique of colorizing is really simple. It's just using a hue saturation layer and then making adjustments with mass and painting in all those differences. It's, it's, it, but it is the attention to detail that makes this task a little bit tedious. It is heavy on the time that it's, it's time consuming, but it's not technically advanced uh, as, as far as Photoshop techniques go. It will be the same thing here on her arm. Normally, you know, whatever color we pick for uh, this, which is probably wood, so we'll pick, a, a, you know, an earth tone. It, it will bounce back and forth between her arm and here, except because the skin tone and, and, and tone of the of the wood may be similar. I, I might not even do that, but if this were, or if we knew that this was something red or if we wanted to make it red, then that will make a difference. Or if it was green, then that will make a difference. And also, or oh, pay attention and study how skin reacts to light. Um, uh, well, you know, if especially if we're emphasizing in, in portraits, uh, the tip of the nose, uh, the tip of the finger, and these small little details around the eye are usually redder or pinker. The same for ears, even though she's not showing any ears. And um, and above, uh, you know, the, the eyelids, stuff like that. Uh, those are going to be a little bit more saturated, a little bit more pinkish. There's also going to be a sweet spot area between the highest highlight, and uh, I mean between the highlight and the shadow and the min and the midtone. There is this, this point in the midtone where it becomes slightly more saturated before getting less saturated. So let's take those things into account when we uh, when we're bringing color back to photo. All right, so let's recap real quick. Color is going to reflect off a surface into another. Highlights and shadows areas are less saturated. Shadows more or less saturated, even more so than highlights. The color hue is going to shift in shadow and highlight areas. And for people, the tip of the nose, fingertips, and around the eyes and ears are going to be more red pinkish. Also areas where they might have skin burn, uh, sunburn, I'm sorry, from you know just being in the sun okay so let's go back to our original image and i'm just going to show you real quick this edit i did a long time ago it might not look exactly the same as i do it right now but this is what we're going for so this is the colorization that i did and this is the black and white 
All right, let's begin. Also, another thing to notice is that the appearance of saturation uh, is going to be affected by the area that is less saturated. So we're going to start painting in. We, I, I recommend starting in with the skin because it's the main focus of, of all of this. And we, it might look too saturated, uh, but I don't recommend you starting messing too much with the intensity overall of the of the painting because once you start painting the other stuff then it's going to look like where it belongs or it won't and then you will be able to make a better assessment of of how to you know deal with saturation stuff but anyways um i actually only use two tools to do the uh the painting of the black and white photos one will be the uh, color balance tool where is it color balance here and this will give me a base of what I want and it has enough differentiation so that it's a good base as opposed to using another tool like like you just painting in some blending mode or whatever okay so I'm gonna start with the midtones and I'm painting in the skin and I so far it's all just guessing some of these photos that you might want to retouch or to recolorize are historical photos and you might want to look at look into you know the color of certain army uniform or you know so, some old advertisement that you might want to want you know the exact colors but for this and there's nothing that has to be a certain color we are just going to guess so i'm going to add some red i'm going to add some yellows to the skin and Maybe a little bit of magenta. And this is the mid-tones. Now I'm gonna go, and sometimes checking this preserve luminosity on and off helps. Uh, sometimes, uh, for some reason, it does the opposite of what it says it does. Anyways, now we're gonna go into the shadows. I'm gonna make the shadows a little bit more biased towards the yellow than the red. Um, and this is just the beginning, so don't, don't think of that you are gonna get it exactly right. Um, this is just the base that we're going for and I'm gonna make the highlights a little bit more reddish so this is what I meant when I said that I, I like this as a base because I, I have a, a little bit more control of you know at least three big sections of the of the of the photograph I'm gonna go to the mid-tones and keep playing with this. Okay, I think this is as good as I'm gonna get with just eyeballing it. So now I'm gonna hide the entire effect. And that was just pressing Command I on Mac, Control I on a PC. And I am using a Wacom tablet. I I don't think it's exactly necessary, but it does help a lot. Um, with this type of work. And now here you could just uh, do it manually. Um, you might want to select using the pen tool or something like that. I think it's because we have to do so much of it, we might, we might just as well just buy the bullet and you know just go for it manually. And you know with this demonstration, because I don't want it to be super boring, I'm not gonna paint in all these small little details that you know that I would if I wasn't recording. And here on the skin, I recommend going over oh, pretty much everything except the eyes, like go over the lips, even though we're gonna change those lips completely, go over the eyebrows. Because if we don't, then there's gonna be some areas where it's gray, where we are not painting. And, and then when we're doing the you know the more detailed color work i think it's just it, it ends up you know we, we end up wasting time and in here around in this area here around the um hair once we get to the hair in here it will be counterproductive to just paint the hair so i do it with either a very soft brush or i go and lower the opacity of the brush and make this a little bit more of a, of a better transition. So I will lower the opacity of the brush, paint with black, and you know, so that, well, I because on the image you will see the skin, so you think of everywhere where you will see the skin, and that's where you need to have at least some sort of opacity of it, it won't be 
black either. Um, and again, I won't go too much into detail because I mean into you know perfecting it because then then the video will be too long and too boring. And right now, understand that this looks horrible, and but that's I mean it it won't be in one in one step. And we are going to create a lot of layers. Um, so I do recommend you to name your layers. Some, I know sometimes we just don't do it uh, unless someone else is going to look at our work. Uh, I do recommend you naming these layers because there are going to be so many of them and you're going to be going back and forth that you might as well do it right from the beginning. In, in This is pretty much the only situation where I do recommend naming the layers. Um, it will it will help you a lot. So I know we just wanted a base color that kind of almost looks like skin. And I think my shadows might be too yellow. I might change my mic completely, but you know, we can do that because one, we're working in, in layers and two, because, um, that's what the, all the other, you know, dozens of layers are going to be. And the good thing is that because we're not using any like any more pixel work, it's basically a bunch of adjustment layers. The file sizes are not that big, so if you care about that, um, this will this you're gonna notice that these file sizes are not gonna be that big. They're gonna be pretty portable. Um, okay, so I have a very rough uh, idea of the skin. Again, I know it looks horrible, it looks ridiculous. This is actually what most look like, especially in the old times when they when they did it manually or on the early days of Photoshop. Okay, but now the magic becomes when we start altering the shadows and the highlights individually. That's why it matters to know how color is affected by you know lighting situations. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new hue saturation layer and I'll I'll say naming, let's name this layer, the one that we did, let's name it skin base. And sometimes I even put a color tag on the big, you know, main bases. So it'll be one for the skin, one for the pants, one for, you know, this tender here, but anyways. And then let's have green for the adjustments that we make to each layer. So here we'll, and then we're gonna clip it and to clip the layer to the, to clip at, at a layer on top of, of its layer below, we can click Alt or Option, and then you will see the icon change when we're here near the edge. We click it, you're gonna see this appear. What this is gonna do is that whatever we do, it's only going to affect this. So that's one good thing is that once you actually do proper masking and make sure that you're only painting over the skin, what this will allow you to do is that you will only have to do it on the base image. You won't have to do it to every new further adjustment that you make. All right, so now let's have the shadows in mind and let's reduce the saturation. And we're gonna reduce the saturation quite a bit. And sometimes I do it in steps. So I do it, um, I, I do just a little bit and then I do like two or three levels of desaturation. One, to have more control and two, because I might, the, change the hue also gradually and that can be done with one layer okay so I'm gonna change the saturation and then I'm changing the hue I think I'm gonna go towards the magenta side of it as opposed to the green but I could do I could do either and I don't know I, I'm not a painter so may, maybe someone has the, uh, the specific right answer of which one should it be Okay, and now I'm gonna name this uh, shadow plus or shadow minus, I guess. And if I make another one, it will be minus minus and then minus 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 and so forth and so on. And again, I am going to hide the effect of the layer and start painting the shadows. So, if we see we have some shadows are darker than the others, so this will be the darkest point of the shadows, and then this will be not so dark, and then this will be a little bit lighter, but still shadow. 
That's also another reason why I do several layers of adjustments on top of it so that I focus on. So on, on this first pass, I am going to focus on anything that is below the midpoint, anything that I will consider a shadow, and then I will go darker and darker and darker on the places where I'm focusing on um, as I go on with different layers. So for example, let's go right here. And I, I actually don't want to be the opacity to be 100%. Um, because I still want some flexibility. In these cases, as opposed to when I'm doing dodging and burning, I don't use flow. I do go a little bit quicker, um, well, quicker in that sense. Um, it's, it's just, I don't know, I, I just, I don't think it's that critical as, as opposed to when I'm doing dodging and burning where it's, you know, it's, it's a really big, big step. This is more gradual. It's slow in the way that I'm separating layers. Um, and I, you know, it, it's not critical as in making the photo look blotchy because I didn't do it right. Like when you do the, uh, the, the dodging and burning and you mess it up because you went too quickly. Um, so I'm just going here in the shadows. So I'm going to include every shadow from the darkest to the lighter shadow. As long as it stays in the shadow, I'm including it in the image. And this is a, a slow process to see a difference. Uh, but the difference is there, the difference will be there once we start stacking up these effects. Okay, so you're already seeing how it looks a little bit better because the shadows are not the same saturation as the rest of the skin because that's not how it will work in real life. Okay. Now we're going to create another layer, uh, hue saturation, and we're going to clip it again. And I'm going to reduce the saturation even more and maybe change the hue a little bit more. Sometimes I don't change it. Sometimes I don't have to. I don't think I have to. Okay. Now again, I'll make it black. I want to make it like probably like 20% opacity. And I'm, I'm doing it with opacity as opposed to flow because I want to know that I'm doing it by lifting the, the, up, doing more of the effect by lifting the, uh, the pen or, or, or the mouse if you're not using a Wacom tablet, um, as opposed to messing it up by doing too many strokes. I think I have a little bit more control uh, in this scenario, at least with the, with the opacity slider. And so now I'm only focusing on the mid shadows to the darker shadows. I'm not, I'm not going to focus on the lighter shadows. Definitely not in the highlights. So if you see now the darkest shadows are less saturated. And just like that, we have an effect that looks so much better. Okay. Now let's see if we can do the, we can keep going with the shadows. Um, but I want to go into the highlights just for a little bit. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to make this green. And now I do the same thing, hue saturation. I'm going to clip it to the image. I'm going to reduce the saturation a little bit. I'm going to go more into the green, yellowish tones. Um, sometimes I, I do change the lightness. Um, that's something I forgot to do with the, with the shadow areas. And, and, and not right now the, the image looks too green as it is at a hundred percent. But remember I'm not painting to a hundred percent, I'm painting to 20%. So I'm, I'm imagining that, uh, this 
two magenta colors are gonna mix with the yellow and make it uh, with the green and make it a little bit more yellowish. Um, so now I'm gonna focus on the highlights. I'm painting it with 20%, and it's the same deal. Highlights and anything above mid-tone. Now in here is where we can start uh, changing the base if you are not happy with uh, the overall colors, which I am not. So I can create a new hue adjustment layer on top of the skin base and without making any, any you know, micro adjustments, just the global one, I'm just going to change the hue of the overall image, of the overall uh, not image, but uh, here the selection of the skin tone. And here's when we can start playing with the saturation. Um, I think that's good enough. Now, just to make this image a little bit more realistic, again, it's all about the details. Now, let me make this green. Now, I'm going to make a new layer, a new, yeah, a new layer, the same. I'm still clipping it to the skin. I'm still working on skin. And I am going to make the uh, those pink little accents, uh, little details that we see. So, I'm going to go away here. Okay. And I'm going to hide it. And again, I forgot to name this see this is why naming is important I uh, by just looking at the image you and because these changes are so sm um, minuscule you won't be able to tell sometimes right away so this is highlight plus and then this is shadow minus minus okay and so now i'm gonna start going through the uh, small little details and stuff like that like i think this dark area here was from when the photo was taken in black and white but it's really she's outside i think some reddening in here will make the photo look a little bit more realistic and it doesn't need to be that much and also in here around her eyes and I think 20% might be even too much for this ah. okay I was gonna go to 10% not flow and let's make the tip of her nose her nose a little bit redder maybe some on her chin definitely her fingers some here or chicks and I think I need some saturation fixes in here because um, this tends to be a little bit more saturated and I probably went too far on the bridge of her nose so I'm scaling back And I'm adding more in here. Or here. Okay, that's helping a little bit. There's still something I don't quite like. Um, 
And again, this, I might be getting tricked by the fact that everything else is in black and white. Um, so let's just go over real quick in here. This is fine. This is fine. Oh, you know, maybe the lips are throwing me off. So let's go ahead and retouch the lips. So this is an example of why I told you just to just go over the lips uh, as opposed to having, you know, gray patches. It's easier to just go over the other one and just adjust the saturation and the hue. Okay, so I'm still gonna clip it to the skin layer. I'm gonna make it, I guess, pink. And I am not too worried about the saturation because I'm gonna lower the opacity. I might even lower the opacity of the entire layer. And I'm gonna start painting in manually. This I think I can go 30%. Oops, white. Okay, yeah, I think it was the, the color of the lips that was making me, you know, making it seem like the image, the, the overall skin was too orange. See, so those are tricks that your your um, brain plays on you. So anyways, you will be able to see the difference. Now, if I hide all the other layers, and you see how this looks too orange, too fake, too ugly, it's in the small details, one by one, building them up, that we start colorizing the image and making it look more uh, realistic. And now when we activate the other layers, you will be able to see. So this is my layer. And this is the new skin work. Yeah, so this is the new skin work that we just did. And just for the sake of time, this is you know the rest as I did a long time ago. And you see that, but that's basically the same principle on how you bring color back to old photos. In a, in a realistic way. And I think as long as you get the skin tones to, uh, to look okay, everything else will look okay. And one thing I do recommend is after you do this, make some global adjustments, even if you don't feel like you have to, but like, you know, make the image, like let's make it a little bit warm, for example. Let's bring out the, re the reds, uh, bring down the blues. And for example, let's, just make this a little bit warmer just to kind of like make it all look like it belongs together you see i don't know i think making a, a small global adjustment you know makes the final you know just the final trick into it okay i hope this wasn't too quick if you think it's too quick and you have more questions i can make an, another video but it's essentially the same for every single part and i can go you know i can go over the, what i did a long time ago um, so for example, we have, you know, the, the dirt is the same, um, the, the hue and saturation changes in the shadows. Um, I think it's a little bit more obvious here in the tent. Um, you know, we have the base, then I started adding some, uh, add some help with the contrast, some discoloration. I changed the color even a little bit further just to fit with the, I think this was mainly to fit with the color scheme and so on. So yes, this is simple. It just take, it just takes a long time. It can take you between, you know, two hours, four hours, eight hours to do it. Um, but it's not complicated. 